Train a child in the way she should go, and when she is old, she will not turn from it. Proverbs 22, chapter 6 of the Bible. <coughs> Good afternoon, staff and students of St Hilda's School. What are your kids really getting up to? All parents should see this. These are a couple of the many pitching reports we've heard a thousand times over in the paper on current affair all over the media. Whether it's alcohol-fueled teenagers joining a fight club, cyberbullying, or causing chaos on the roads in our pig-plated cars. Is that really us? Is that the way we think of ourselves? I look around me and I see intelligent, caring, talented young women with so much potential. So how do we reconcile these two images? And most importantly, what do we base our lives upon so that we may continue to reach our potential? This year, the Chapel Committee wants to explore the values that form the foundation of Christianity and how they are still very much real and very much relevant to us today. Christian values are the basis of our lives here at St Hilda's. Regardless of whether we are religious as individuals, we still aim to apply ourselves to the core teachings of the Bible. We endeavour to promote the necessity of these values through a broad acknowledgement of their aid in shaping who we are now and for future sake. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, it is said, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. What makes them specifically Christian? Are they not universal in some way? Of course, but indeed these were the foundations, the values portrayed in the messages of the Bible. These are the universal principles of humanity passed on through generations. This year, your chapel prefects would like to focus specifically on these values. Courage, forgiveness, humility, love, compassion. It is recognised that people, young and old, throughout history and still today, consistently question, ridicule and stereotype the young generation, convinced that our ability to maintain Christian ethics and morals is disintegrating. What is happening to our young people? They disrespect their elders, they disobey their parents, they ignore the law, they riot in the streets, inflame wild notions, their morals are decaying, what is to become of them? These are the words of Plato in the 4th century BC. Belief that young people have lost their moral sensibility is not a new thing. Fast forward 400 years. In the year 1274 AD, St Peter was quoted as saying, As for the young girls, they are forward and modest and unladylike in speech, behaviour and dress. Attitudes like such individuals toward young people has even been allowed their own particular phobia, a febiphobia, the fear of youth. American professor and psychologist Tanya Byron released an article in which she writes, I despair for today's young people who are feared because of the actions of a, min of a minority population, violent, aggressive and antisocial, a population that has always existed. This distorted perception of young people creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. Why bother to try when you are told you're a failure? Why bother to strive when your existence is seen as a nuisance? Yes, as teenagers we do push boundaries. Medical research tells us that's a normal part of our physiological stages of development. But we, as today's youth, need to ensure we direct our energy and risk-taking mentality to achieving positive outcomes as we realise pushing boundaries comes with consequences. It makes good sense to support that physical development with exposure to an appropriate Christian value system, thus surely allowing to give us the best possible opportunity to help each other reach our potential. But let's come back to the principles of Christianity. Courage, for example. It could be said that rather than taking risks, young people have the courage to go a little bit further. 
There are numerous examples of this in the Bible, such as the story of David and Goliath. Courage is not rebellion, not defiance in many ways. And if you open your mind, if you look at the cup half full, it could be called innovation and creativity, just trying something new and different. Where would we be without that? In 1956, a young man took a risk. He released a single track that would outrage parents across the globe. His name was Elvis Presley, the king, founding father of rock and roll. A gospel singer for most of his young life, Elvis lived by Christian values, yet cultivated his teenage spirit in a positive way to create a phenomenon. Without influences like Elvis, without his daring nature to be different and courageous and express himself, who knows if the innovation of rock and roll would have succeeded, linking people and cultures together all around the world through music. Neuroscience has shown the development of the brain is a natural process. Take toddlers. It is universally recognised that generally two to four year olds are experiencing a natural stage where they will appear egocentric, believing the world is centred around them. We don't see people publicly ridiculing toddlers for that behaviour, for we recognise in many ways it is out of their control. We defend our children. The world realises the mind of babies and toddlers is growing and developing, so it becomes excusable. So, being the same thing is happening in an adolescent mind. Why is it all of a sudden such a terrible thing? That transition from childhood to adulthood, identity confusion, hormonal influences and a bewilderment of roles, that's all part of the growth of a young mind too. At every stage of development, there's a different stage of defiance and risk taking. Whilst we recognise the importance of those encouraged Christian values, those mentioned in the Galatians and in our school motto may not always be obvious and at the forefront of our mind of our youth. They will always, these will always be our underlying values. We never really lose them. Our mission this year is to make an extra effort in reflecting on the significance of the ethics behind Christianity within our daily lives. Love and forgiveness two other recurring values presented in the Bible. We see people applying these morals to their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Yet there are those who struggle to see that at all. You look at toddlers. When they make mistakes, they are forgiven, loved regardless of their wrongdoing. People have their empathy and compassion to understand and guide them towards more acceptable behaviour. Should that not be the same for adolescents too? Do teenagers, who we often forget are still maturing and exploring, do they not deserve that same forgiveness? To be loved like that too. We all make mistakes. We are only human. With love and good guidance, we hope we can be forgiven and shown a better way. Our job is to learn and to avoid repeating those mistakes, to direct our energy to helpful rather than hurtful goals. This is so important, especially amongst our community and our peers. You can't expect people to be perfect friends 100% of the time. Live by the empathy to understand everyone's growing in their own way, fighting their own battles, and realise, as the Bible encourages, that everyone deserves some sort of chance to be loved and forgiven. Media so often portrays teenagers and young people in a negative light, and it's vital that we recognise the misconceptions in the media's betrayal. As 18-year-old Dominic Mitchell, a student and member of the National Youth Agency's Young Researcher Network quoted, when most people think of young people, they see us as a horizontal line. One end screams, violent, hoodies, drugs, and the other end whispers, angry student, athlete, friendly. She says, I am proud to say that I feel somewhere in the centre. I haven't stabbed anyone and I've yet to gain an A grade. That is not to say that I haven't worked my butt off to get where I am today, just like the millions of other young people across Australia. Here at St Hilda's, everyone is striving for their own success, whatever that may be. 
We do work hard for what we love. That doesn't mean we're necessarily all A-grade students. The Christian values we implement within our lives help us to veer away from an image like that, like that of what we see so often on television and steer us toward the other end, grounding us and helping us to leave a wonderful and positive legacy upon our school community. I'm not saying the, young, the negative behaviour of young people, old people, people of every age is always justified. But the view that we are a generation of depleting values is unfair. That cannot be justified. I refuse to accept that we are a no hope generation, that we have abandoned our good Christian values. And I think everyone in this room would agree with me. We will continue now and in years to come to try new things, to be bold and be courageous, as the Bible encourages. But that does not in any way, shape or form mean that we have lost track of our morals. The ethics that underpin the foundations of the Bible are all just as real and just as relevant as they have been in any other age. We ask in our hopes and prayers that these values form the basis for all our relationships. 2014 is the year to be different. Embrace your freedom and self-expression and reflect on what you value. Let's prove to the world, to the ones that we look up to, that we can do the proud, that we are more than the media claims we are. The Chapel Committee, committee in 2014 aims to continue to promote the positive impact Christian values have on our lives, whilst also accepting the natural science that explains how we grow and mature, secure in the love and grace of God. Thank you.